is the biomechanical energy harvester. harvester. This one's actually worn on the, on the left leg. And you can see this is a, just a conventional orthopedic knee brace. And then mounted on it is this aluminum chassis. And in this chassis are, are gears and a generator. And whenever the knee is extended, it spins those gears and the generator. And uh, if we allow it to, the generator will actually generate electrical power. And when you flex, it does nothing, sort of like a freewheel on a bike, like backpedaling on a bike. So it really targets this extension phase. Right now, it's actually not generating any power. That, that, that power generation is, is typically triggered by sensing signals from this potentiometer, which measures knee angle and knee angular velocity. And that information is sent back to a computer, which has a real-time control system on it, which measures that a thousand times a second and makes decisions about when the right time is to engage the power generation. And so you can actually hear that here. This is without power generation. And then if it's engaged, you can see it's much harder to do. And then disengaged, it's easier again. And so that engagement and disengagement happens once a stride at the region where your muscles need the help at the end of the swing phase. It actually assists them in decelerating that extra resistance rather than, rather than cause you more effort. It can cause you maybe even less effort and while producing electricity at the same time. So you can see the knee angle. So you can see the knee angle here at the bottom of the screen. And then on, right here, just above it, is the power that's being generated every time I extend the knee. And in fact, we can turn that off. And you can see no power is being generated. It's much easier to move. And then back on again. And again, we're generating power. OK, good. Now I'm just going to get a close up on you working. You just, yeah, exactly. You're just looking at this one. Yeah. Keep going. So right now I'm going to start the machine, uh, the treadmill. Um, the subject's just going to start with his uh, feet off to the side. And I'll increase the speed for him. Maybe you can give it a little bit of a kick start there. And then Mark's going to get on the, the treadmill. What happens <coughs> is as he's walking, if you can tell, whenever the knee is flexing or bending, you can't hear anything. That's because it's not spinning the gears of the generator. But whenever he's extending it, especially at the end of the swing here, it spins the gears and generator. So right now, and now. And, uh, and there's also a control system that senses that and engages the power generation at that time. And that way we get electricity. And uh, because it's coming on right that one period of time, it also assists the muscles in what they're doing. And so that electricity comes without an additional cost.
And then what the monitor does over here is we just use it to monitor the knee angle while, while the subject's walking, which is measured with a sensor on the device, and the power. So you can see the power that he's generating here, which is occurring just for about 20% of the walking cycle. Each one of the bumps is a walking cycle, and, uh, um, and that's the electricity we get. Well, yeah, so who would use it? That's a good question. So the early adopters are going to be people whose lives depend on portable power. So one of those markets is, is the medical market. So people who wear, for example, a powered prosthetic limb. These are artificial limbs that have computers in them and motors in them. And the idea is that the healthy leg could be charging the artificial leg as they walk. That would allow them to walk longer, walk faster, walk further. Um, but it also enable new technologies that currently aren't possible because of the limitations of of, of battery power. And that applies to all markets. All portable devices are, are somewhat, or sometimes in very big ways, limited by the amount of batteries they have. And so if you can remove that limitation, you can build more sophisticated portable devices. So there's powered prosthetic limbs. There's what are called powered orthoses, or powered exoskeletons, which help after stroke or after spinal cord injury when a limb is partially paralyzed. There's what are called neuroelectric prostheses, which are devices that again help with partially paralyzed limbs by recording and stimulating from nerves to help the muscles uh, activate in the proper coordination for people to walk again. And further in the future, maybe much further in the future, you could take the same basic principles, the same ideas of harvesting from a, from a body joint and doing this generative breaking and apply it to a fully implantable device that could be implanted underneath the skin and be used to charge, for example, uh, 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 implanted drug pumps or implanted neuroprostheses. So that's one market. <laughs> so a second market is, is military. So soldiers these days, shall we? Okay. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start that again. So soldiers these days are, are, are different than 50 years ago. They depend upon... Sure. So an, an, a second market is, is the military. Soldiers these days depend upon batteries like depend upon food and water. And that's because they need them to charge their navigation devices like GPS and also to charge their communication so that they can talk to each other. This helps them get back to base safely. But to power those devices, they require a lot of, a lot of batteries. For a 24-hour mission, they can carry as much as 13 kilograms or 30 pounds worth of batteries. So if you could charge it from their motion instead, you could reduce the load they carry and enable them to, to use much more sophisticated devices at the same time. And then a third market is the consumer market, which is, uh, includes really consumers that are away from the grid, and like hikers, field workers, emergency workers. And, and these people you know, depend upon batteries, but they don't have a way to recharge them. And so they use non-rechargeable batteries. Uh, and those batteries end up being disposed and end up you know, uh, being in our landfills and ultimately hurting our environment. They can't use rechargeables because they don't know when the next time they're going to be able to plug them in is. So if they could use their own power, if they could treat themselves as the grid per se, then they could uh, now use rechargeable batteries and depend upon them while they're out in the field. <laughs>